Good evening, and welcome to Inside Government, a show put together by QU's Community College and shown on Spectrum, Verizon, Fios, AMA, the Auburn Regional Media Access, as well as WIN 89.1, the college's radio station. I'm your host, Guy Cosentino. We are delighted to have in the studio with us Assemblyman John Lamondas, who was elected in 2022 and just uh, literally flew in here from a banking uh, presentation in Albany, and we appreciate him coming in. He represents, uh, was one of three representatives in Q County, but represents mainly the city of Auburn and the towns of Brutus, Cato, Conquest, Mentz, Owasco, Senate, and Troop, as well as the towns of Skinny Atlas, Stafford, and Onondaga County. And uh, we want to thank you for being here. You're we wanted to talk a little bit about the budget sure. uh, that's been uh, proposed by the governor, $233 billion, that's with a B, and talk about some other items that are policy related, but sometimes get uh, worn into the budget. But sure. you are, you just literally drove in here uh, from Albany for from a hearing. What was the hearing on? So the hearing was on the financial technology sector, you know, all of the platforms that uh, that are being used and generated, like, for example, PayPal, Venmo, Square, and the regulation of them, how we keep customers and their data safe, because uh, it's a fledgling industry. So uh, we want to make sure that we're on top of this so that the industry can not only prosper, but that everyone's information can be safeguarded and so that it's as safe as a brick and mortar transaction. So not necessarily about uh, fees and, and things of that nature. That was part of it as okay. well. I mean, that's one of the benefits of that. The fee structure is less. That's what's driving people to that. There's a lot of, uh, depending on which platform you're talking about, different uses, different applications. But uh, the bottom line is um, that uh, uh, many people are drawn because of that fee structure. And you weren't just going because you were bored and had nothing to do. You <laughs> are a member of a committee that was reviewing this. Correct, the so banking what, committee. And so what, what is the portfolio other than Wall Street? Um, so the uh, portfolio consists of um, everything from your HR platform that pays, you know, that, that will pay somebody at a company. Typically, that application is uh, roughly 1,000 employees or greater, so your bigger operations. Right, uh, right now, as we sit, um, there are roughly, uh, uh, I think the numbers, uh, like 114,000 New Yorkers and various businesses across the state are enrolled. Their, their business, so their employer. So that's covered by that committee as well? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so. financial services overall? Um, financial services overall was not part of today's hearing. No, no, but I meant that's a banking, that's in the banking yes. portfolio. Yes, yeah. What other committees do you serve on? So agriculture, the environmental conservation, uh, corporations, and um, uh, banking, and... Um, so uh, are you on that many committees because there are that many committees, but... You are the Assembly Republican Conference is yeah. at what number of members right now? So we're at uh, um, 48. 48. Yeah. So you're too short we're of too having short. Uh, the ability to sustain a veto if one ever came yeah. from the governor. Um, and that, so that's a, a prime Ooh. target for you for this November, am I correct? correct? Yeah. And we'll get into elections uh, uh, in a bit, I, I do want to talk about the. Budget. We want to be over, so we're three short. We're so three we, short. we're going to get. We're, we're going to. But you are up uh, from just we're up two five. or three uh, from a, the last cycle. Yeah, we're up five, which was very historical. And the I don't think the press did an adequate job of explaining how that uh, how significant that was because every incumbent saved their seat, and we added significant. So, so for those who may not remember, there's 150 members of the assembly. Yeah. Uh, a governor needs uh, to sustain a veto. Um, to override a veto, you need two thirds, which means that they need to have uh, 101 votes. So, yeah, if which if they the typically do, which they do, but if yeah. if the if the Republicans coalesce, and this did occur yeah. during previous administrations, they could sure. be uh, a help to a governor, where usually then the governor pays more attention to the conference. Right. There's an upside. Uh, to that as well. Yep. So the governor's proposed a, a $233 billion uh, budget. Where are you in the process right now with roughly uh, three weeks to go uh, for April 1st? A little over that. So we are still, there's still rampant negotiations ongoing, budget letters uh, for 
additions uh, are still being submitted. We're still talking to constituent groups and uh, um, uh, people that have concerns about I individual lines in the budget. Uh, for example, this week uh, I spoke to several, uh, one of which, one of the most significant was Cornell, uh, be just because of their impact on agriculture. Agriculture is our state's number one industry. It's this district's number one industry. So what happens at Cornell impacts us greatly. And so that's and something- And Cornell does get funded largely by the state of New York. It, it's yes. one of the key Correct. funders. Ed we think of the higher ed piece. Yep but they have cooperative extension and a number of other tertiary yes. programs along with that. Yeah. Big, you know, I think Hugh County once had the largest number of uh, Cornell graduates, mainly in the agricultural area. Sure. Uh, for years, I don't yeah. know if that's still the number. So the, the governor's budget uh, is about, if I'm doing my math correctly, about $6 billion higher than the last one? Correct. What's so, new? Uh, what's new is, I didn't say what's good, but I said what's new. I'll get to what I you hear think you. it's on good. What's um, new? What's raises new is it's unsustainable. Okay, and we've been raising this. Our caucus has been raising this point for um, three consecutive budgets now. The 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 amount of the increase is unsustainable. Don't forget, uh, I would refer people to the Cato Institute study that recently came out. Uh, uh, highest out migrating state three years in a row now. Uh, and that's a terrible statistic. So that impacts, you know, those are people leaving, businesses leaving, net loss of population, uh, all of which impact impact our ability to uh, um, to operate as a state. And so I think the uh, um, the bottom line is if we don't address this and acknowledge it, and I mean the governor that we have a net drain and that it's taking businesses and economic prosperity and economic opportunity away from us, that, that this continues to grow in an unsustainable fashion. So the third page of their press release from the Division of the Budget quotes her. Yeah. And it says, uh, quote, this budget makes it clear that fiscal discipline can coexist with progressive people-driven policies, end quote. I'm assuming you don't disagree. You don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Okay. I'm sorry. As a fiscal conservative, uh, um, I just can't. Uh, and it's very simple. I break this down simple. If you and I were sitting at either your or my kitchen table with our checkbooks right here, we would not manage our own checkbooks this way. We would think every which way from Sunday before we write a check for something. Is there, are there pieces of the budget that you do like? Yes. So yes. give me. So, so you will get several budget bills. Yep. So some you may support, some you may not support. Correct. Maybe you might not support all of them. But what do you like in the current proposed budget? In the current proposed budget, there's one. Uh, there's several good things with respect to agriculture. Again, our state's number one and industry. And you sit on that committee? I do. Okay. Uh, our state's number one industry. This district's number one industry. And the it, the reason this is so important is there is. Um, significant funding uh, for all different types of agricultural infrastructure, one of which is increased slaughter facilities, uh, which we don't have here. So, so for those that may not know, the, the cost of protein has increased, uh, animal-based protein has increased. Farmers for the last several years have been forced to make slaughter appointments, sometimes as much as a year, 12, 13, 14 months out in advance. Many, much of this business is going so out of state. beyond bacon. Yes, way beyond, way okay. beyond. and Because that's uh, what most people in the last two years have, have judged yeah. protein-based. They, yep. they look at bacon prices. Correct. Okay. I mean, this is, this is uh, um, all-encompassing, but the money allocated to improve the, uh, the number and existing facilities uh, for slaughter facilities is so going to make a difference. not necessarily new facilities. It, there are some new. Okay. Yep. It's, uh, um, it's going to help a lot. It will, it will significantly ease the, uh, now keep in mind, it's going to take several years for, 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 these, uh, um, for this infrastructure to come online, uh, whether it's improvements to existing but facilities to or new facilities. At some point for it That's to right. produce. Yeah. Other pieces in, in the ag area? Uh, yes, the, uh, there's uh, money for biomaterial processing. And the big one, I, I think the biggest and most important to us as a state is uh, there's $24 million for dairy processing. And again, for r right here in central New York, right here in Cayuga County, that's a big deal. 
you know, Cuyahoga County should get a share of that. And uh, um, does the budget delineate that Cuyahoga County will be allocated X number of the no. 24? No. That's a process that goes on after the budget's yeah. approved. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know, are you surprised that there's so much in there for agriculture? Because one of the things that was, I think, the, not the last time because you were here in November on mm -hmm. tobacco, but I think last year we talked about it was this issue of how uh, ag would deal with overtime rules. Yes. And it was not favorable to, to the farm community. Am I correct with the you final are. ruling? It is not. So what was the final ruling in the end? The final ruling was that the overtime uh, adjustments would go into effect in a phased manner, um, which would mean that the number of total hours worked uh, before over w would be reduced, and then overtime would be would be forced upon the producers. They'd have to pay that, and so as the as the as the threshold came down. Um, what, we'll, what we expect to happen is those workers that want to come here, many have been bringing their families here, they've been coming here for generations, they're familiar with the operations they work on, it will be a driver for those workers to go out of state because what's going to happen, the farms don't make enough, in, uh, uh, enough income to offset the overtime that they're going to have to pay, leaving them in most cases, the only way to do it is to either cut hours or make up the difference with their own families and uh, um, neither of which are palatable. So if they cut out, And we have a lot of Central Americans who come to Central New York for some of these jobs, am I correct? Oh yeah, that? not just Central America. I mean, Mexico, Central America, even South America. Okay. So, um, so the, where I was going with this, are you surprised there is so much good news for agriculture in, the, in her budget? No, I think, you know, no, nobody is all bad. I think she understands the importance of agriculture. You know, or else this wouldn't be in here. Okay. I, I really think that. So what, forget, let's leave schools out for a second, because yep. that's its own description. We'll get into that in a second. What don't you like in the budget? So that's really easy. Um, the migrant funding. I just can't accept that. So when you say you need to explain that. The illegal. For somebody who won't, yep. under, hasn't in, in that world. So several billion dollars being allocated to um, I illegal aliens and uh, across several different uh, across several different platforms what this funding does 500 500 million of which is coming out of the state reserve funds as a taxpayer and a business owner and a father and a husband i don't want our reserve fund being fleeced in that way i don't want because this is a fabricated this is a fabricated emergency Okay, we, we, we ship these people here in the dark of night. We, they are illegal, and in with them comes weapons, disease, fentanyl, all other types of drugs. So this is a... Well, these are being shipped by governors of other states. Uh, right. Okay. Well, most, not all. Don't okay. forget that we, have a northern, we are a border state. Right. We have no, a northern right. border. And I just met last week. Uh, with Congresswoman Tenney and uh, several law enforcement agencies across central New York, one of which was our federal uh, border patrol. And uh, from, from Plattsburgh to Niagara Falls, we've got people coming in. So I know uh, as we tape this on the 7th, yep. uh, yesterday the governor made an announcement about uh, safety within the MTA, so the subway system in New York. Uh, where she's going to send uh, troopers and National Guard yeah. members. Is that a good idea? It doesn't sit well with me. Here, we, we, we've gone through this charade of... For those who don't know, you were in the military. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 27 years. I don't, I don't like the deployment of National Guard uh, for these types of, of things. To me, that's a purely... And you can get into the title application. Of course, it's legal, but that doesn't mean it's right. So with that in mind, were you not supportive of that particular piece? What should New York, and, and, and keeping in mind the $500 million that's being proposed, what should New York be doing with this recent influx? In many, in many cases, though, I think most people are visualizing that there are buses that are being yeah. sent here from Texas and Florida and right. whatever. What should New York be doing on this front? I personally think New York should not have let them in. We shouldn't be housing them. We shouldn't be giving them benefits. Should they, so should buses be 
stopped turn at the border around. and turn them around. Okay. Yeah. That's very, very succinctly. Why hasn't New York done that? I think New York, ha I think, let, let's take that, let's peel that onion back a little further. So Governor Cuomo declared New York to be a sanctuary state. Mm -hmm. Governor Hochul has upheld that. Okay. So, so until she says we're not a sanctuary yes. state. Okay. Yeah. And, and so is there a constituency for her that is, wants this large influx of immigrants? I think, I think there is, or they wouldn't do it. So what, besides what you just talked about, this 500, what else should New York not be doing? I think, first of all, New York should not be accepting them. New York should not be accepting them in the manner in which we had in the dark of night and then dispersing them all over. Uh, New York should not be displacing uh, people, children, out of, out of existing structures and facilities to house them. I think that's criminal. And, you know, there's... You know, in several of those cases, I, I wanted to ask this question. In yeah. several of those cases, is that because they get a higher reimbursement rate? The institutions, the, the hotels, the motels get a higher reimbursement rate versus uh, children? I have heard that. And okay. I don't know 100% if it's true, but I suspect it is. But this is a national issue. Yes. So what should Washington, I know there's been a lot of yeah. talk in the last month. The Senate came up with a, a deal. They thought they had everybody on board. And then yeah. for whatever reason, it, it, it fell apart. Yeah. What should Washington do as far as a member of the New York State Legislature is concerned? So I'm probably the only one in the New York State Legislature that's ever been to the southern border and watched an operation go down from our side, number one. So, so I'm gonna say that I'm, I'm one of a small group of people that's actually been there militarily and understands this at a, at a deeper level. That border has to be closed. A country without a border is not a country. Our resources are our resources. They're not the world's resources. It's not our responsibility to feed the world, to house the world, to give the world a home or to give them medical care. It's our responsibility to take care of our own people first. And so all of the diffusion of our assets to all of these illegal aliens is morally wrong to me. And so we have a legal immigration process. Follow the process. Do you think the legislation, for what you know of it, that was proposed by the Senate that failed, would have gone a long way to solve that problem? I think it would have solved some of it. And, some, and I'll take some versus none. Okay. Let me go back to the budget and process. Yeah. Uh, you're having hearings. Uh, the date for the, the budget is uh, traditionally April 1st, which I think this year is a, a Sunday. So you got about 25 days left. Yeah. Do you think you're on track to hit that date? I think we're on track more than we were last year. And is it important to hit that date, whether it's the first or the second because uh, of Sunday voting so and the Sabbath? federally, in my former life, there's nothing worse than having to stop and implement a CRA. We don't want Continuing to, resolution. Yes. Okay. I think that's criminal. I think our, we, we owe it to our constituency, to our population, to our people, to our businesses, and to our governments. So you think you'll meet that date or thereabouts within? I'm hopeful that we will. Again, given it, it, yeah. that it's a Sunday. So the governor has said, again, in this budget document, there is no income tax increases. But are there tax increases in the budget that are not income related? I am going to say that uh, until it's done, what we have today doesn't matter. So I am going to... I guess my question you know what is... I mean? Yeah, I do, but I want to... I wanna, roll yep. this out. If you're going from 227 uh, uh, yep. billion to 233, yep. somebody needs to explain to me where the other 6 billion is coming. Yep. Now, if you're uh, hitting the rainy day fund for 500 million, I get that, but you still owe me 5.5 uh, billion. So where's it coming? Where's the revenue coming from or is everything coming out of the rainy day fund? This, the operating budget increased by 4.5%. But the spending, we, we also increased spending by 4.5% as well. And so that, uh, um, that surpassed the uh, 
projected inflation, which was 2.6%. So where's the money so, coming from? The uh, new revenue. The, the, the new revenue has got to come from taxes. Okay. Uh, it may not be income tax. It may not be income okay. tax, fuel tax, surcharges, what have you. So that's the, that's the revenue side. Yeah. I'm sure there's some people have been lobbying you in the last couple of uh, months on the uh, expense side. And one of those are local government officials. Yeah. I know uh, Mayor Genentino was here uh, as our first guest of the season. Yeah. Uh, he and other mayors have made a concerted effort yeah. on aid uh, and incentives for municipalities, the AIM program. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what is that program? And what do you think, do you th there has not been an increase in it for a, a long time. Uh, where does that stand? So I, I'm not sure exactly where that budget line is today. I know there, ha, there uh, have not been increases to it. I know they need increases to it. Um, and one of the things tied directly to that here locally is uh, one of the offsets for that is the uh, local occupancy tax. So, um, you know, whatever this ends up being, whether it's enough or not, the hope is now again, um, I haven't decided if I'm going to carry that or not yet. I'm asking for a public meeting because I want to listen to everybody. I did the same thing in Skinny Atlas. I refused to carry that occupancy tax unless there was a public meeting where everyone had the opportunity to come and say, yes, I want it, this is why, or no, I don't, and this because of. So that money may be made up that way. Correct. And so that. Yeah. Um, one of the criticisms, left, right, Republican, conservative, depends on who's the governor. Yeah is this whole issue about putting policy in a budget. Is there a lot of policy in this particular budget? There is, um, it, it depends on how you look at it. You could conceivably say, yes, there is, uh, when we talk about things like prison closure, uh, uh, when we talk about um, any number of, of other issues. That has been a, uh, that's been a, um, a concern for our caucus the last three budgets that I've been involved in. Remove the policy completely. Right. So you mentioned prisons. Yes. Uh, the governor is proposing, she is not specific to the best of my knowledge, about closing how many prisons. She, uh, when I say specific, she hasn't yeah. named the sites. Correct. How many would she like to close? Up to five. And what is her argument for doing? That? I don't necessarily that you have to believe the argument. Right. What's her argument for uh, doing that? Um, reduction in prison population would necessitate fewer prisons. Uh, the operating expenses associated with them would offset the the, the debt that we're talking about. Uh, but um, do you agree with that? I do not agree with it at all because it's having a, a very bad uh, impact, where it is continuing to consolidate ever more violent inmates into fewer places. Uh, how many prisons are in your current district we, we've got uh, just the Auburn prison Good. yeah I mean there's another do you see Auburn on the chopping block no okay no. let's go to school aid and I'll come back to a couple of other things yeah. uh, how uh, how are area schools treated in the budget in general yeah we'll get into specifics in a second um, in general I'm gonna say that I don't like what's what's happened the uh, um, the total decrements across our district the 126 assembly district is almost $5 million, and I've had people in my What's office. What's a decrement, sorry? A decrement, just the loss of loss, loss of, of Okay. So loss of budget. Uh, I've had people all across the district in my office the last several weeks, and, and so what this amounts to, just to make this simple, is let's, it's a little less than $5 million. Let's just call it $5 million. Um, those are real people, real resources, real jobs, that we're going to take away from our schools in order to 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 be able to maintain the budgets that they have and that shortchanges our kids so let me take it in two parts so yep. uh, we had superintendent jeff parazola here yep. i think last thursday auburn is getting an increase yeah. it seems like their worry was that they had had three years of increase to come up with foundation yep. the foundation formula he is surprised that he was getting an increase this year is Auburn, has that solved the foundation aid issue for Auburn? Um, or is I'm it just say, a patchwork? No, it's a patchwork because further manipulation of it without genuinely fixing it, which has been consistent feedback from everyone. So if we don't, and 
and let me be upfront. That's a really complicated formula. I don't personally know how to fix it. Uh, not too many people do, but oh, those there is a simple way. You have to destroy it all and start over, and everybody has to get at least what they get now, and that will add billions of dollars to your budget. There you go. Okay, um, so I solved it. Yeah, and you, <laughs> and you don't have to pay me for that. But on the other, on the flip side, you do have yeah. some rural districts yes. who they're hurting. Read, they're hurting, yes. and they are mad right now. That's right. So what happened in there? Is that because they didn't plan well? Is it because they didn't know that the COVID, and I, I hate to use this phrase, but I will, the COVID spigot has kind of run out? Well, that's part of it. But the other, the other part of it is the, uh, um, the rule that was associated with it, and they're losing, they're losing money. They're, they're funded based on previous, previous year's budgets. And so that just, uh, just doesn't work going forward. We've had several press conferences with rural districts citing what their losses are going to be. So traditionally, yeah. if history is any indication, governor proposes X number of dollars, the legislature adds school funding. Yep. And by the way, in an election year, every two years, they even add more. Do you expect that to be the case this year? I hope so. I don't want to see our, we, you know, we have significant structural problems. One of them is our out-migration, one of, and it, which is driven by uh, the opportunity in our schools. So I don't want to, I, I, I want to see this foundation aid get fixed. I want to see our schools get the funding they need. I want them to be able to have the problem of, of wow, we can add positions. So I want to, we have a minute and a half left. Yes. I do have to, I want, we always end with some political issues that come up because you are in a political position. Are you yes. running for re-election? I am. Um, we talked about the, the number of votes you need to get to 51. Yep. Um, there are a couple of primaries that are coming up. GOP primaries, uh, Caleb Slater, who is a Cuga grad, Fanny, and I hope I'm saying her name right, Villarreal. Uh, they're in a primary to go against uh, Senator Rachel May. Have you endorsed either of them? I have not. Uh, will you before the primary? I'm considering it, um, but uh, I have not made a decision yet. Are you supporting Donald Trump? Well, these are viewer questions. Are yeah. you supporting uh, Donald Trump for re-election? I am. Uh, do you view, uh, as a question, viewer question, do you think uh, Joe Biden was legitimately elected as president in 2020? I do not. You do not. Why not? I just think there was, the, the biggest thing for me, of all things, came well after the election. It came in Albany when, when uh, we had a company, a bunch of consultants come and show us um, how the voting process worked and how some of the machines could be manipulated. And so this was six months ago, eight months ago. So this is two and a half are, years. Are steps being taken to fix that? I hope so. Um, but that's up to 62 boards of elections, or is it up to the state board of elections? I'm not sure where the jurisdiction for it is. Mm -hmm. I would think the state board of elections. But that's, that was for me. I, I had had a question mark, you know, because never before had I personally questioned the outcome of an election. Never. Um, there was so much hype about this. I, I, I was, for whatever reason, I was. And then when I, when I had this briefing in front of the machine with the experts several months ago, several years after the election is when I said, oh my God, this was possible. Well, 30 minutes goes really quick. Yeah. I, we appreciate you driving in quickly. Uh, you did not speed to get here uh, for this interview, but you've been very nice to us to come in each uh, semester to give us an update. You were here a couple months ago on tobacco. You were here to give budget updates. Our guest has been uh, Assemblyman John Lamondis. We want to thank him for joining us. Uh, he will be on the ballot. I do not believe you have a primary opponent. I do so not. we will hopefully see you in the studio in the fall when we do our forums. Uh, we had planned to be back in just a moment with Karen uh, Belcher, the head of the, uh, the executive director of the Food Bank of Central New York. She has unfortunately had to cancel again, and we are looking to reschedule that show most likely in the fall uh, and let you know that. As the college heads into spring break, we will be off until the start of April uh, when we return with a whole host of shows for April and May. In the coming weeks, among our guests are New York State Senator uh, Rachel May, New Cuyahoga County Administrator Steve Lynch, Auburn City Manager Jeff Digert, and uh, City Comptroller Mary Beth Leeson will give us a budget update, as well as Auburn Superintendent of Schools Jeff Parazola will be back in the studio 
with Tessa Cropper, who I misnamed uh, from her maiden name uh, the other day when she was in, or when he was in, uh, to give us a budget update for the school budget, and we'll have our Auburn and large school forum in May. In between, we do expect uh, Robert Harding to be in the studio to do some uh, questioning of candidates who are running in primaries in June. Uh, if you have questions for us or thoughts or ideas for shows, you can contact us at cozgyto at aol.com. I'm Guy Cosentino for Q Community College. Ha have a great evening. Have a great couple of weeks. And we'll see you back here the 1st of April when the state will have a budget. And he'll tell us when we're off. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome.